Hi! I'm here today to review It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. Trigger warning for this video that there will be some discussion of suicide ideation and depression. This book follows a young man about 15 years old named Craig who experiences some, suici some suicide ideation and therefore checks himself into a psychiatric unit in Brooklyn. I first read this book in middle school, like 7th or 8th grade. And I remember very vividly reading his depictions of depression and suicide ideation and just thinking that sounds so bad and awful and I'm so glad that I do not experience those things. And then lo and behold, about, you know, five or six years later, I would also be hospitalized for more or less the same reason that Craig, the main character, was hospitalized. I remember when I was in the hospital thinking and about this book constantly and thinking about how everything was simultaneously very sad and very funny in most of the experiences that I had there. And I didn't feel ready to pick this book up for a long time, but some time has passed and I thought that it was time to reread this book. The way that Vizzini describes depression is honest, harrowing, and in, at least in my experience, entirely accurate. I was kind of aghast at how many parallels there were between Vizzini's or... I mean, Vizzini was also in a psychiatric unit for about five days um, in his early 20s. I was surprised by how many of the experiences Craig had in this book that I also had when I was hospitalized. Similarly, I also applied to a fancy school sort of similar to the executive pre-professional high school and after studying really hard and working and whatever, I was able to get in and then realize that it was not for me, which is sort of similar to how Craig goes about his high school experience, although for me it was my college experience. And it was just kind of spooky to see like all of these parallels between my life and this like fictional character's life. So that is to say that this book really hit home for me. Although this is a book about depression and suicide ideation, it's also a book about hopefulness and recovery and learning to manage one's symptoms in the best ways one can. And ultimately, I it reminded me a lot about how, at least when I was hospitalized, the a plan had gotten me into the hospital and a plan was going to get me out of the hospital. And I was very focused on this plan that would get me out of the hospital. Um, the, of course, those two plans were very different. One was towards my demise and one was towards living and thriving. But it seemed kind of funny to me that there were these, there's just, life is all about these, these plans. Which may seem obvious, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of hearing myself say that and I'm thinking, yeah, no, duh, like of course life is about plans. Um, but I think that especially the moment like there's this drama or this irony between like him making a very serious plan to hurt oneself and then going to the hospital and then making a new plan about living and moving forward that was very focused on the future and support networks and thinking about how those two plans were so close together in time and how it flipped so quickly um, is astonishing to me. And it's sort of similar to like what happens in this book is that there's Craig who wants to hurt himself and therefore checks himself into this psychiatric unit and then he ultimately finds ways to cope with his depression in the hospital. He has this plan to get out of the hospital and go live his life. Um, and it includes like, becoming an artist and transferring schools and doing all these amazing, um, very realistic, like, practical things to further manage his symptoms. I will say that I really appreciated this ending because it's incredibly hopeful and it's incredibly real. He recognizes that he's not cured and that there is no cure, but that he can find ways to manage his symptoms, more or less. I found that inspiring. I was reading this and I was crying and I was laughing and it was, again, it really hit home for me. 
I will say that the life after hospitalization is so much more, I mean, this is to be expected, it's so much more messy and confusing than that. I guess, you know, they say that best laid plans... What do they say about best laid plans? <laughs> What's the saying? Oh my god. Anyway, the point is, this is like a, mo a spot in time in which Craig has one of his lowest moments and then slowly starts getting better and also recognizes that there is no cure. And I think that, it was, that was just, I guess, like the most important part to this book and I wish that he had elaborated on it a little bit more. All that being said, I think most vividly I remember a scene in which Craig is first gets to the hospital and he calls his parents. They just keep saying how proud they are of him and how they're so glad that he checked himself into this hospital and it just had me like just sobbing. And I think that what Vizzini does so expertly is that he renders all of this with such humor and grace but also with like messiness, not in the writing style but just kind of like reflecting the messiness of such an illness. It is really, the, the title is just like perfect because it just, it is kind of a funny story. It's sad, but it's also true and it's also just kind of funny. I'm looking up best laid plans. Oh, I didn't know. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Oh, and then that's why Mice and Man is called, but that's the subject for another video. Thank you for watching! That was actually like way too much. Too much of the fingers. Thank you for watching. Bye.